look back in hindsight Everything is 2020 In hindsight We make mistakes, we're learning from this In hindsight be your today and your tomorrow In hindsight It's so much clearer now how can retirees find meaning and productivity outside of their professional careers? Today's guest, Sharon Rolfe, has some insights to share. Sharon retired from Boeing in 2016 and, like many retirees, struggled to find her footing. She's quickly transitioned into a motivating influencer at 76 years old, becoming an author, podcast guest, and the queen of courage on Instagram. Sharon teaches newly retired singles to sparkle without touring their friends, and family. Her journey from feeling invisible to life, a life full of purpose and productivity, is nothing short of inspiring. Welcome, Sharon. I'm excited to hear about your transformation and how you help others find their inner spark. Good morning. Is it morning? Where are you calling from before I say good morning? In north of Seattle, so it's 9 a.m. on a Saturday morning. <laughs> We're up early here on the, on the West Coast. How are things going for you? Uh, it's good. It's going to be a warmish day today. So I'm already sweating. <laughs> I was wondering if you could see the sweat because I can feel it. I'm super hot right now. I don't have the air condition on. Uh, but we are, I guess, equally going through this heat wave across the country. So tell me, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I, uh, I'm in the middle of five and you know, the middle kid often gets kind of ignored. And yeah. I actually wanted to be ignored or invisible because uh it was safe i okay. I, was, I was a lifelong learner but there was also um sexual abuse going on in our home and i thought well if i keep my head down yeah. if i get good grades i don't rock the boat and i'm obedient maybe mm -hmm. i'll be safe yeah and i pretty much was um i didn't know the full extent of uh what had happened or what was going on and now in the last couple of years, I've realized that I, I must have been kind of invisible my whole career because okay. I, it, my career was just kind of whole hum. I worked at GTE, the phone company for 19 years, mm -hmm. and they transferred me down to Tampa, Florida. And then I lived in Dallas for about 12 years and I'm back to Seattle, close to where I was born. Um, but I've never married, never had kids. And that for me makes retirement very different. I don't have kids pulling on my, you know, come to my party, come to my game, come to yeah. my, you know, all that. And um, so I'm, I'm particularly concerned about, uh, there's a lot of single people in retirement and yeah. that can lead quite easily into being isolated and invisible and mm -hmm. lonely. So I've also started a loneliness community to okay. talk about um, how to go from loneliness to resilience and then to belonging, hopefully. Yeah. Were you, were you an introvert? I know you said you oh, like yeah. to be invisible. So you were? Oh yeah. <laughs> were you, were you a brainiac? You said GTE and yeah. then Boeing, right? <laughs> so did you find those careers, even though they were ho-hum, you know, from your perspective and hindsight, looking back, did they, did they have meaning for you besides just getting a paycheck? And besides, you know, that were you able to be in a position to solve issues? How did you, how did you take your career at GTE and Boeing in hindsight? Well, GTE uh, included a lot of data processing and helping create programs to solve problems. Mm -hmm. And I often met with uh, clients that needed problems solved and defining the problem is always the biggest part of the job. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I was diligent. I was focused. I was, um, um, I did do Toastmasters and Dale Carnegie mm. courses. So that was showing my initiative to maybe be seen, but yeah, you know, and I seem to work at it more seriously than a lot of people because Man, if the minute if speech was supposed to be two minutes, I, I'm going to practice getting it in two minutes, you know? Right, right. I, t I took, <laughs> I can't even say I took it. <laughs> Toastmasters, I went and I sat in as a, um, you know how you, you go in and you kind of test drive it a little bit? Sure. So I test drove it and it was really good. I just didn't have the, unfortunately, the time at the time to go ahead and pursue it and actually go to the to the uh, meetings and stuff like that. But I hear, you know, you hear great things about yeah, I Toastmasters. I actually got to hear, uh, attend a convention in Nashville, I believe it was. And mm -hmm. boy, I heard some great speeches there. It was quite inspiring. I know. I know. Wow. 
So you never got married. Why don't? Why do you think you never got married? Well, you know that brainiac thing comes into play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that introversion. Yeah. Um, I I didn't find guys that interesting. Uh, I knew a few, but they uh, were either not, you know, interested in marriage either, or or oftentimes you get too busy, things yeah. get off the radar. So um, I didn't. I haven't even dated that much, but right. Uh, consequences of the abuse they say either you gain weight and and that keeps people away and yes i did gain weight okay. i've lost about 50 pounds since i retired but the other side is that you live a <clears throat> promiscuous life and that yeah. was kind of the role of my my sister not heavily but yeah, yeah. Um, something i didn't want to enter into and somehow i i guess i never really connected with my body being something that serves a man or mm. I don't know. Um, it just, yeah. you know, so I, got you. I, I do have a wedding dress, Mr. Jones. Uh huh. <laughs> Mr. Jones. <laughs> that was, that was my, that was my, um, I was reading a book by Oral Roberts, Daily Guide to Miracles. And he, he wrote it in such a way that you, he intended you to repeat reading it every three months. Mm -hmm. And so he was guiding you to act as if it's going to happen. And, and so I did, I went down to the Bon Marche here in town and um, I had to tell a couple of fibs to say, you know, cause they wanted to know how did I meet this gentleman and, and mm -hmm. what was it like and all that. And I had a crush on a guy at the time. Okay. Uh, I actually was more of a friend of his mom than him, but uh, <laughs> so I kind of told that story, but um, uh -huh. I, you know, I'm pretty authentic and self-sufficient from a very young age, I'm realizing, you okay. know, being true to myself was um, pretty, I, I identified with that a lot. I think a lot of people miss that, yeah. that they're, they're doing what they're, they think will make other people happy. And that was, that was on my radar. <laughs> right, right. I hear you. So do you believe, so you kind of sort of possibly um, believe that, you know, your childhood and experiences that you had at home kind of led you to pull back and you said be safe a little bit and yeah and be an introvert i got you okay i i, I never was interested in having my dad walk me down the aisle yeah i've I really you know that's that's horrible because a lot of the things that you know what we become and you've become a great person so that's awesome but what we've become is you know kind of affected you know your child you know, as a, as a child growing up, and I'm trying to say this, I'm thinking about all these different questions and, and being sensitive to the topic. Right. Um, but a lot of things that happen as a child influence how you, like you said, you could be promiscuous or you could be standoffish. Um, mm -hmm. but whatever, it, there's so many other options, right. Um, of how it does it. And then you find out later in life, like, this is why I am the way that I am. Be it good. Be it indifferent, be, you know, whatever it is. Well, in fact, considering your question about hindsight this morning, yeah. I um, I remember distinctly. I was working. I was a teenager. I was working in our basement where our bedroom was, and um, I, I I think I was cutting out a blouse or something. And I I heard the next door neighbor outside the door talking mm -hmm. to my brother or whatever, and he came down and knocked on our door. I wanted so much to jump into his arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't have the guts to do that, but yeah, um, uh, yeah. That's one one hindsight that might have yeah. turned out. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so okay, what sparked your transformation after retiring from Boeing? What made you say, "Hey, look, I don't want to be this this person who sits in the back and doesn't, you know." You know, whatever. I want to get out in front. Well, it, what the, what started it was on a January first week of January of 2016. I had something come into my inbox at Boeing, and okay. it was saying that Boeing was partnering with the community college on this coaching class. Um, in in okay. uh, I think transforming their leadership one person at a time because our my class was made up of at least a third or half of Boeing people. Okay. That were, yeah. So. Um, but the the email said that, you know, they didn't talk about it in terms of partnering, but I was already, as a behavioral scientist, okay. I was already empowering teams that I worked with. 
I was helping them take the problem solving down to the lowest levels. <clears throat> so um, I tried every which way to get the uh, company to pay for my education because it was about ten thousand dollars. And um, and they were smart enough to realize that since I was heading out the door, they wouldn't be able to benefit from mm. from my, you know them paying for my education for this coaching class. Okay. So yeah, you're you're right. I guess I'll fork out the money myself. Yeah. And so I started acting as if this is where that queen of courage kind of comes in. I started taking okay. baby steps. What if it was in fact correct? What, yeah. What um, would I do if if I believed or saw that I was rec uh, uh, influencer? Yeah. So that gave me the guts, the courage to. Um, take on maybe doing podcasts. So I okay. did 53 podcasts myself mm -hmm. and um, I quit because it's quite a bit of work, but I don't regret having done those at all because like you, you you're learning a lot of stuff. Oh yeah. And, um, and I, I later put several stories in my book, Fresh Courage in Retirement, Finding Purpose, Essence and Fulfillment. Mm -hmm. There's about, um, uh, seven or eight stories in here and one of my favorites was a lady at 52 felt like she needed to expand her heart and mm -hmm. she started planning a community service projects around the world oh and wow she, she wound up at four years she did this for a year she yeah she fed baby lions she uh helped out a baboon sanctuary she awesome. uh sang uh i think it was the imagine song in China mm -hmm. to a class of, um, I think, uh, in college kids, she <laughs> she came back and realized that her heart had expanded. Mm -hmm. Now she had friends all over the world. And right. I, I think she realized that that's what she needed. I know that's right. They're happy to see her show up. Huh? <laughs> uh, yeah. So so how do you help retirees find their inner spark? Oh, man, I love to do that. We all have invisible assets inside mm -hmm. you know our experiences hindsight even involved you know our experiences yeah. our talents our giftings our um personality that's mm -hmm. kind of inside your guiding principles enter into this mm -hmm. and your um hopes dreams and wishes yeah so we we take all of those things and then what they had us do that first weekend in, in class was to kind of look around the world, the nature, and pick something that you kind of identify with. Okay. You know, um, I I had had a uh, an amazing experience in Dallas when I lived there that um, the first weekend in May, they have a May Fair. I guess they don't maybe anymore, but it was... It was outside, uh, having booths outside the Cowboy Stadium. Okay. And I, I went on on a Saturday, a Sunday afternoon, and they were starting to kind of close up. But way in the back corner was a uh, tent for a jeweler. And he okay. had been a geometry teacher turned jeweler. His his designs were so unique. I just yeah. loved unique stuff. <laughs> yeah. And so I took some, he called them stackables, three or four rings together that he mm -hmm. would design. And I put them on my hand. <gasps> Something moved in my gut. Okay. What, what just happened? I felt it in my gut. Yeah. So I took them off, put them back on, and it happened again. Mm-hmm. I was so bewildered. What's going on? So I was reading a book about, you know, talk, speaking about yourself as if you were something, you know, in, a tangible uh, object about mm -hmm. how I contributed to my work team, how how uh, reliable and quality and, and uh, dependable and all that stuff. So I decided yeah. to use as my metaphor for Sharon, that stackable ring image. Okay. Yeah. Because it was already a precious moment to me, and yeah. so um, taking all my values and what and wrap them up into a paragraph that would describe me as that item, and so here's what came out: mm. 
I am precious jewel of wisdom. Hmm. I am colorful collaborator, motivator, and learner. I am tranquil, authentic, and pure inspirer. I light fires. I want everybody to know who they are on the inside. <laughs> and so I took it into class, you know, the next time we yeah. met, and I think I blew everybody away. But um, one day I remember... I, I had started bouncing off the wall and how do I know if I'm productive? I hate wasting anything. Yeah. And um, I realized I, I came and read my, my essence statement three times that day. Oh, yeah. And I gradually realized that when I lived from that, everything felt right. Yeah. It's like I was aligning with my core. Yeah. My beliefs about me because all the examples I'd used to create that as a statement is what we called it then was true. There was nothing about it that was a lie. Now, yeah. maybe I stretch it a little bit to use the word pure, but I think it's a lovely word. And I mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. made choices in my life yeah. to keep me pure. <laughs> I carefully weigh that. Yeah. Keep my mind and my spirit pure. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's me. That's the only stretch I think I had. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, um... <laughs> no. So you, I think it's very important for, for you as or everyone to know who they are, right. Who makes them up. And then also what they're, you know, take it from the alchemist book, their personal legend is right. What is their, what is their goal? What is it that they're looking to do? What is, what is it that they're meant to do? Right. Um, Destiny. So, yeah. Yeah, yes, absolutely. So I appreciate that. And it took, maybe it took you a little while, but you got there, right? You found your personal legend and now you're helping other retirees to, to get that spark back. So what advice do you have for others who've been a little lost um, or who feel lost after retirement? Like what advice would you give them? Well, Lee, the, the amazing thing is oftentimes we don't know what we want. Yeah. We have been so dumbed down in that regard. Yeah. You know, you got to pay for the roof over your head. You got to pay for the car. You got to yeah. pay for the education. And mundane starts settling in. And where did I leave? Well, my book, Fresh Courage, that term came from a Hallmark movie. I love Hallmark movies. Oh. And it said, uh, this, this setting was, they were on a dude rant and they, and, um, the lady was saying, often when you go home from vacation, you go home with fresh courage. Mm. I had realized that I yeah. had come to, I had more gumption, you know, to tackle some things that, you know, were a little scary at work because yeah. I was now revived from vacation. So oftentimes, you know, when you're watching the water, you know, waves coming in and out and, and you're just kind of, uh, I love that. yeah, coasting a little bit, you, yeah. a, a voice will come to you. Or yeah. you're watching the fire, you know, as the sun goes down, uh, your campfire, and, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. a little voice will come. Well, too often we dismiss those voices. I have made decisions in my life based on being obedient. Yeah. What if that voice is true and honest and means good for me? Mm -hmm. And um, so when it comes to retirement, this is a good time to find those messages remember them again right. and um i'm i'm starting the last two three weeks to think daily about what would bring me joy you know i i'm kind of weird in that i like to collect near-death experience stories okay people that have gone to the other side and came back and they yeah. often come back with very similar messages yeah and um i'm realizing that Living from my joy is critical uh, to my happiness. And by the way, <laughs> it kind of feels like heaven on earth. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Who wouldn't want heaven <laughs> on earth? That's the goal. Yeah. <clears throat> so I was, I was chewing on that before I got out of bed this morning about <clears throat> that to daily ask myself what would bring me joy. Gotcha. And um, the big why about what I'm doing, Mr. Jones, is all this free time in retirement is untapped potential. Yes. 
Yes. I yes. hate wasting things. I told yes. you that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and all this um, free time is mm-hmm. uh, meant to have a destiny, a reason for you being here. Okay, right. I'm going. I heard that um, a lot of people put off retirement because they'll be dead in three years. That kind of stabbed my heart. What? Yeah. What? And right, right, right. What a lie. But yeah, it might take a couch potato three years to die. Yeah. <laughs> it's a couch potato. What can you do to make sure that you're staying productive? And then also, what do you encourage others who are retired? Even, you know, you don't have to be retired to be productive. So right. uh, what kind of advice would you just give on staying productive? How to look at it? Well, like I say, when I realized I, um, living from what matters to me, my values, yeah, and that kind of thing, the time I spend, in fact, I'm I'm probably not having near as much fun as I should be, and so okay. I'm trying to, like, the ocean is just a mile away. I can see the the Puget Sound from here. Do I go down there daily, weekly, monthly? I can't say I have. I tell you what, Sharon, I'm going to jump in really quick. I was in, I was stationed in Hawaii and I was there for, for three years. And one of the things that I regretted was not going to the beach as often as I probably should have living in Hawaii. And now I'm in, uh, well, it's not San Diego, but I'm in the San Diego area, Southern California. And so I, I took that, that feeling of, oh my God, why didn't I go to the beach? And now I try to, you know, go to the different beaches, Oceanside and, in San Diego Beach and La Jolla, you know, all these different places, right? Because there's such peacefulness. So I'm encouraging you, I'm second in the motion, for you to take your butt a mile down the road and <laughs> go and enjoy that that peace and that tranquility of the uh, Pacific Ocean. I'm assuming the Pacific Ocean since you're in you're in Washington, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I heard people say that. Why go to Hawaii when we have San Diego? Yeah, so it's fully I've taken advantage. Both, and I can agree that's a pretty valid statement. Well, what I do do for my joy on a daily basis is take uh-huh. little dog biscuits with me okay. on my walk. So my joy is feeding the dogs and getting my Aww. kisses from dogs. I love it. I love it. I walk my dog every day, um, either twice a day or once a day, depending on my, whatever my work schedule is. And I have a bunch. My dog, I have a Shih Tzu. So my dog is really fr- small, obviously, but it's also picky. So we have all of these treats, and I keep saying, you know what, treats that he does not eat. So I need to take these treats to the dog park so that I can be like Sharon, and I can give some of the other dogs that are there some of the treats that my dog just doesn't want. So anyway, I'm going to take that to heart, too. I'm going to put the treats in the car and stop leaving it on the shelf and forgetting about it. <laughs> yeah, that's part of my grocery bill is buying treats. Well, you know, that I talked to you about the, the promptings in our spirit when we're out on vacation. Yeah. And I've really started paying attention to that little voice or sense intuition inside of what I should do today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that sensing of what's right for me is, I, I guess some people call it your truth, you mm-hmm. know, that, yeah. um, but I'm respecting that intuition of being the right thing. Discovery, self-discovery, your spark is one of the surest ways to develop a greater appreciation for your life and i choose to look at life like a piece of heaven on earth yeah 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 well i tell you what you're going around doing it and i was reading some i think it's the soul of the mind and they were saying like a lot of things that you do you can't really remember it because it's mundane or it's repetitive and if there are things that you want to remember then engage your senses right so if you're going around and you're and you're, and you're feeding the dogs the the dog treats right it's something that you may do every day so you may not recall these memories accurately so in order to help better recall these memories accurately engage your senses 
So the smell of the air, the colors, you know, just pay attention to that, the sound, the feel, you know, of the dog's ear when you're rubbing it, right? And then it, it gives you more of that memory that is real. And it, the reason why I bring it up is because a lot of times we do things, like especially when you're working, you get up, you go to work, you come back, you get something to eat. And then somebody said, what did you eat for lunch? I don't know, right? You're like you just, you just had it, but you're doing the same thing every day and there's no real uh, reason for your mind to even have to care about remembering it, right? It's the same thing. So going out and doing these new things, uh, getting from behind the desk, getting from behind your own self, just being to yourself and getting out there and trying new things and then engaging your senses um, will really will really be that spark uh, to create some of those memories, right? And then to be able to reciprocate those to others as well. So that's my little spill on it. I want to ask you a few questions. Behavioral sciences. Were you a behavioral scientist the whole time when you were at G Is that what you got hired for? At I, no? Yeah, I got hired to be, uh, my title was pro business process analyst. And okay, uh, looking at how people work together on a team was part of what my job was. Okay. And getting them to cooperate and collaborate. I love collaboration. Yeah. Because um, when you put on the table what, well, that's knowledge. Man, collaborating is is solving a problem together but knowledge yeah. management which is also what i'm certified in is you put on the table what you know and i put mm -hmm. on the table what i know and then the possibility of new knowledge emerging could like happen that. and that's like that. synergy as in that capacity does does some of that knowledge some of that skill that you had during those uh working years do you apply that now in your coaching um yes um uh, because mm -hmm. as you Describe to me your values and your guiding principles and your yeah. talents and all that. Um, I help you see it in a new light. Okay. You know, I, I often would, would help people rewrite their resume because sometimes we're too close to our own skin to be objective. <laughs> yeah. And I can see some of your strengths that, oh, you mean that's a skill? You mean everybody can't do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote my resume when I got out the military and it got no hits. And so I, you know, I trusted this, this uh, gentleman. He was an advocate for veterans who were transitioning from the military and he took and he rewrote my resume and it looked, it didn't look impressive to me, but I started getting hits because he understood what it took, right? I'm in the army for 26 years. I don't know what the hell a resume is supposed to look like. Yeah. Right. So that is an amazing skill. Um, just connecting people, getting them reconnected with things. Right. So once you, Obviously, you're working and then you start to retire. There's a reconnection because you're so used to doing this thing, right? That spark that you, you're trying to find because you lost that spark because, you know, you're conforming, right? Oh, yeah. Well, you're here, conforming. Here's part of the, the process is uh, one of the steps in what I do is to have you take some three by five, five cards after you've written your statement about your something that... Uh, you think you're describing yourself like some people have said the ocean or the river. And as you wrote that, that paragraph about yourself, now mm -hmm. take it to four or five friends and give them a um, three by five card and say, when I read this to you, what comes to mind of things, other things that I could use to describe myself yeah. as being that object? Because... Um, asking for feedback about what you see in me as whole new information. Yeah. And it adds to that, that picture of how life is for me or what I'm contributing. So, so what's your approach to inspiring curiosity and possibilities in others? Um, well, the main uh, stake in the ground uh -huh. is that the Bible says nothing is impossible. Okay. Anything is possible. And since I've been um, studying neuroscience and uh, quantum stuff, I'm realizing that there's a hundred different ways to describe one situation. Yeah. And, and there's knowledge, wisdom on different levels. Yeah. So that helps me understand that anything is possible. 
You okay. know, every now and then I see these stories about aliens or whatever. Well, it is possible. <laughs> but um, I I did read one. I think one of the elective uh, books that I read in my coaching class was The Art of Possibility. And for okay. some reason, I actually put off reading it because I guess I was a little bit afraid of what I'd find. Bill, um, being courageous and being uh, thinking about possibilities. There, there's so many things on, like the military, none of us realize that you know from your perspective in the military. So right. There's right. all kinds of perspectives that uh, could lift our spirits if we just knew what, why things were done a certain way. <laughs> Strength, my, my, my perspective of life is that all this free time in retirement is begging to be used with your talent, your skill, your destiny and it mm -hmm. will change the world and lee i think in these days i'm just really i'm starting to sense that people are starting to say if it for the world to be a better place i need to jump in i need to contribute i need to do what i can to make it a better world and i'm right. here to help okay that's a that's a powerful statement i love it sharon i love it so I'm going I'm to I'm tap this, and this will be the last time that I ask this question. Why is understanding one's uniqueness so important for personal growth? Well. That spark. Yeah. We're compared all through life. You mentioned it, that you're expected to live a certain way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, you have to be measure up to be accepted. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you are already accepted. Here's some of the messages from people that have gone on the other side. Yeah. And it's always that you're, you are loved, you're infinitely um, valuable and lovable, and you are love. When we have a hard time believing that, um, it's kind of hard to realize putting myself out there is of enormous value. Yeah. You know, the kindness, um, being kind to yourself is a good place to start, but the kindness, the smiles, the, the, you know, it's, yeah. it's free. It's you're, so tap free. you're tapped in. I like it. <clears throat> yeah. And you realize that what was put inside of you is also free. Yeah. And to, to be willing to look for that gold nugget inside mm -hmm. is um, such a powerful because there are people around you that are watching your life. And when you start to shine, mm. they start being wanting to be around you. They want to yeah. start listening to your stories. Yeah. They want to uh, start being like you. Okay. Yeah. You know, a certain thing for a long period of time, you know, your career. And now you're not doing that career. So you may have to force your son. I'm just throwing out something. You may have to look at things differently. Right. I give a good one. Um, I went on a cruise and, you know, my daily is get up, take the dog out, get back, shower, get ready for work, check my emails, start going into the day. So I went on this cruise and I woke up and I was like, oh, I can't walk the dog. I don't have the dog here. I don't have internet connection, so I can't check emails. And it was a freeing moment because I realized that I didn't have anything that I was supposed to be doing at that time, but enjoying myself. Right. So I had to make a shift though. It was only five days, right. I had to make that, that mental shift. And I was forced to, because the other things that I was used to doing were not available to me anymore. So that's a small thing. <laughs> so it's something like that, maybe a perspective. Uh, how you looked at things? Um, yeah, I, I'm actually a bold thing I did here a couple of weeks ago was sign up for a cruise uh, to Jamaica, but I justified it because it was a class I was taking. The class was okay. on a cruise ship. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, and I did take uh, a schedule me a vacation to Mexico as my retirement uh, yeah benefit. Uh, but I actually retired about six months earlier than than I planned to because they were actually part of our job was to work ourselves out of a job. Okay. <clears throat> um, but I have considered there's so much growth of housing around here 
Mm -hmm. I think they announced here, I don't know, five or 10 years ago that between Microsoft and Pixar and um, Google, so on and so forth, that there was like 50,000 people moving into here. And they're still building for those 50,000 people. So... I yeah. I am kind of considering at what point is it going to be too many people here? Right. And where would I want to go? So I asked myself that about every six months. And I actually talked to somebody on my walk yesterday. It was here from Montana. I said, Montana's looking good, you know? Oh, wow. I do know somebody <laughs> who lives in Montana and they love it. Yeah. It's really wide open, you know, uh, not as congested as... Seattle's pretty congested. Uh, I know where I'm at is very congested in California, so uh, so that'd probably be a good choice. I did have a friend of mine, a co- uh, co-worker as well. He he moved to, don't do this, he moved to, what is it, um, Oklahoma. And as soon as he got to Oklahoma, he loved the place, loved Oklahoma until tornado season started coming around. And he had one, and I'm putting this business out there, that was like nine miles away from his home. Uh, that he just moved into. So he was a little rattled by that. So keep all of those natural things, those natural disasters in mind before you consider where you're going to go. Okay. But Montana yeah. seems to be a good choice. Yeah. I <laughs> I uh, would hate to lose the mountains, you know, the yeah. ferry, the water, yeah. the beach. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, you know, for the love of my life, I'd consider, consider. <laughs> uh-huh. But, yeah. <laughs> so i asked you a few questions um what is something that maybe i didn't ask you uh maybe you want to talk about the book uh, but something i didn't ask you that you'd like to relate to the listeners well this is a saying that i found at work at, mm-hmm. at gt one day and i i loved it is if one ha- is by thomas wolf if okay. one has a talent and fails to use it one has failed If one has a talent and partially uses it, one has partially failed. If one has a talent and finds somehow to use the whole of it, they have gloriously succeeded and won a satisfaction few people ever know. Mm. Yeah. Words to live by. Yeah. Yeah. And even though few people know that, to, to realize it's our choice yeah. to go after it, to be brave and courageous. And, and, uh, one, of, one of the blocks I have, um, I say, never, uh, well, never underestimate the power of planted seed. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm using that and believing that for all the work I've been doing, that there will be a harvest. There has to be a harvest. But the other one is, um, you'll know the next step once you take the first step. Hmm. That's what often stops us is we don't know how to do the whole thing, you know, to build a skyscraper. I've never, I've never heard that. You'll, You'll know, know the, the next step. step once you take the first step. I like that. I'm writing all this stuff down. Good. <laughs> <laughs> the next step. That's that's pretty cool. I like that. <laughs> it's your time to shine. <laughs> Fresh courage. I love it. So, um, you know, the I do have a loneliness community on, uh, it's on Facebook, but we conduct it on, on Kajabi. So you have to join it and then we record every Wednesday morning. Mm-hmm. Um, and this last month we were talking about um, belonging. Yeah. As they're starting to be discussions about teams and businesses. Yeah. Trying to take advantage of your teamwork, your innovation, your, your, I've got your backside. Uh, you know, I, I care about your success and dreams and failures, you yeah. know, that, that more cohesion and keeps, um, uh, and AI doesn't, can't replace teamwork and belonging. You know, that's, that's the emotional stuff that innovation comes from people. Yeah. And um, so there's a, a economic advantage to your team feeling like you belong. Okay. Uh, I don't know why I slipped that in, but oh, that, <laughs> uh, the loneliness. Talking about the loneliness, yeah, yeah. 
I'd like to be able to attract uh, military people because oftentimes they, their culture outside of the military is so different. They, and there was the camaraderie and that yeah. I've got your back and I have to, uh, you know, kind of know what to expect. But yeah. um, <laughs> I know I had a lot of fear uh, doing different things. And, you know, it kind of resonates when you talk about the, you know, having a gift or having a, a I guess it's gift and not really using it, um, a talent or a skill or whatever it is and not really using it and how you fail, right? Uh, a lot of times it's, you use the words having courage and, and overcoming fear, right? Because I had a fear of not living up to my own personal expectations or someone else's expectations of me doing this thing. Um, and, I've, and I'm working towards it as well. So I appreciate your insight on that, Sharon, but working towards, you know, getting out there. So for me, I used to do photography. I still do it, but do photography. And, you know, when I started doing the podcast, I did it just audio, right? Because I, I didn't feel comfortable uh, being in front of the camera because I felt that maybe it wouldn't meet the expectations of the people who are watching. Right. So here I am trying to overcome that uh, and, and constantly doing that and, and hopefully doing a, a decent job. But you know what? It doesn't really matter because this is what I feel that I'm drawn to do. And I enjoy meeting people like you, Sharon, and, you know, who have amazing stories, right? Different perspectives, because only thing that I know and the only thing that you know and the only thing that the person next door knows is their perspective, right? until you start talking to people and listening and opening up and visiting different places and having new experiences. And now you have different perspective. You've expanded your perspective yeah. on life in general. So, so where can we find out more about your book? Uh, do you, you know, or your, your site or just what you're up to Well, I, and your, and your podcast. Don't, don't leave. Are you still doing that? Or you said no, you stopped it. No, I'm not on podcasts. I am uh Spreaker has my first, 22 23 episodes on it it was just audio and okay. then then i started on a transformation talk radio i engaged me for the audio and video and um that's on a lot of platforms okay uh, my book is on amazon fresh courage in retirement finding purpose essence and fulfillment now yep. i have to tell you audience that this is a do it yourself kind of um book because okay. I give you lots of questions at the end of each chapter to think about how it applies to you. Yeah. So um, I help you reflect. I help you remember uh, what, what in fact is possible and what you enjoy doing. But um, I, mm -hmm. my website is SharonRolf.com. Mm -hmm. And I want to mention that um, uh, you can join my, uh, my community, Loneliness Resilience Community, at mm -hmm. SharonRolf.com forward slash join dash community. Okay. And um, another one is SharonRolf.com forward slash inner dash spark. Okay. And um, I, uh, on this class that I'm going to be taking on the cruise ship is all about speaking mm -hmm. um, and making money. Yeah. And I am proposing that I be a speaker on cruise ships because there's a lot of boomers there. And I intend to inspire them with possibilities on cruise ships. I love it. I love it. So when is this cruise taking place? It's uh, the third week of September out of Fort Lauderdale going to the Bahamas and um, Jamaica. Nice. Well, Sharon, enjoy your trip, learn some stuff and, you know, put it out in the universe and you'll be, you'll be out there instructing those baby boomers before you know it. Right? I'm so practicing that's what... right here, you know? <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> but hey, thank you, Sharon, for sharing your incredible journey and insights uh, with me today. It's truly inspiring to hear how you found your spark and are helping others do the same. And for our listeners, thank you for tuning in. We hope Sharon's story encourage you to explore your potential and live a fulfilling life beyond your career and during your career. And stay tuned for more insightful episodes and remember to find your inner spark. Thanks again, Sharon. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks for joining me here on Hindsight, the podcast. I'm your host, Lee Jones. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I did. 
And while I have you here, why don't you take your mouse and go over and click on that subscribe button? No, no, not right there. Over to the right. To, no, no, down, down, right, right there. Boom. Thank you. Now, thank you for subscribing to Hindsight the Podcast. I'm your host, Lee Jones.